All right. As people come in, we will start up in just a minute. Welcome, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Last Tuesday in February, as Beverly and I were just saying, we don't know what happened in February. So happy almost March. <laughs> Yeah, and I was saying that we got that extra day and still, it just doesn't seem like enough. Time flies when you're having fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's some people to join us. It's just about 12 o'clock. Welcome, everybody. Great, we're getting more people. Welcome. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I will go ahead and get started since it is 12 o'clock. Welcome, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Tool Time Tuesday. My name is Andrea Young, and I am the ECAC communications lead and a parent educator. Today, I am joined by Beverly Roberts, who is our ECAC Family Engagement Manager. And if you don't know, February is National Parent Family Leadership Month. So Beverly is here to talk about, you're not perfect and that's perfectly fine. So she is gonna be sharing strategies to, about self-care and decision-making for parents and caregivers. And I know that is something I'm interested in, in learning more about. So I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to Beverly. Okay, I am on. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining this Two Time Tuesday session. You are not perfect, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, as Andrea said, my name is Beverly Roberts. I'm the Family Engagement Manager at ECAC. I am also the mom of three adult children, one who has intellectual disabilities and autism. And we certainly appreciate you choosing to spend a portion of your day with us. As we've been talking about, we're almost at the end of February, but for a short month, February has a lot of observances. We had President's Day, Valentine's Day, National Love Your Pet Day, National Dog Chocolate Day, Groundhog Day, Ice Cream for Breakfast Day. I missed that one. <laughs> and we've even got that extra day for leap year. Today is National Strawberry Day and National Polar Bear Day. Who knew? Uh, just to name a few. But February is also Black History Month. And as Andrea mentioned, it is also National Family Leadership Month. And so as we close out the month, I think it's important to remember that you are a leader in your family, in your day-to-day -day life and experiences. And you are making decisions for your family every day. And those organizational and negotiational skills that you use with your family, it translates into leadership opportunities at schools and in the community. Now, do you have any idea how many decisions you make regarding your child in a week or in a year? Well, I've got a statistic for you. According to a survey conducted by the research organization OnePoll, parents make at least 1,750 decisions in a child's first year of life, averaging about 34 decisions per week, maybe per child. That's a lot of decisions. And I think as family, we have to just remember that there are times when we have to make decisions where there are no clear right answers. And as parents, we're always striving for perfection to make those perfect choices for our children. And we can do our best, but the reality is we won't always get it right. The poet Maya Angelou said, do the best you can until you know better. In other words, you, you know better, you do better because this journey called life is a learning experience that never ends and mistakes are part of the of life because we live in an imperfect world. So y'all, we gotta give ourselves grace and remember that intentions matter. But when we are making decisions, our mindset is so important. 
we can't focus so much on something that's not going right, because if we do, we fail to recognize those important moments and experiences that go well. We have got to have a positive mindset. Now, I've been sharing with my ECAC family and my biological family and my friends and whoever I can share this with, something that I saw on Facebook. And sometimes you see some really good stuff on Facebook. And what this post said was that instead of saying, saying, I've got to do this, say, I get to do this. So when you are sitting on Sunday night thinking, I've got to go to work on Monday, instead, think, I get to go to work on Monday, or instead of, I've got to clean this house. I get to clean this house. Or I got to cook dinner. I get to cook dinner. <laughs> this puts you in the mindset of gratitude because you're thankful for your job, that you have a roof over your head, and that you have food to cook. And I'm going to tell you, that simple little tool has really helped me to look for the positive even when there are challenges. And the load just felt a little bit lighter. So stay in the gratitude mindset. Rather than cluttering up your mind with what's if, coulda, shoulda, woulda mindset. Remember the clutter in your mind will wear you down and tie you out. And that doesn't leave much room to make decisions. So a couple of quick things. We're making decisions. There is a process for making decisions. And we all kind of go through this, even the most routine decisions. So think about what, um, how you decide what you wear in the morning. You might ask questions. You might be asking questions of Siri or Alexa. What is the temperature? What is the high for the day? What is the low for the day? To give you a sense of, you know, what should I wear? You're gathering information. You're thinking about, okay, maybe looking at your calendar. Do I have any appointments? Do I have any meetings? Am I actually going to really see somebody? Um, and so really thinking about what you are going to do that day. Do I need to dress to impress? And then looking at what are the choices I have to wear in my closet? and making those choices. So we make lots of choices. We make individual decisions. We make decisions for our family and with our pet family. And we make decisions in partnership with others. But what else can we do when decision-making in terms of self-care? Well, I'm gonna throw another stat at you and this sort of blew my mind a little bit. We have an average of 12,000 thoughts that go through our head per day. And according to the National Science Foundation, 80% of our thoughts are negative and 90% of our thoughts are repetitive. So if you think about that, we've got about 9,600 thoughts, negative thoughts going through the mind in the course of a day and they keep coming back. So we've got to figure out how we put those negative thoughts in its place, not in our mindset. So we've got to practice mindfulness. Mindfulness allows you to clear your mind, to give spaces to make decisions, and also a chance to share joy and peace. Now, the definition of mindfulness is the practice of maintaining a non-judgmental awareness of your thoughts, emotions, or experiences in the moment, being present in the moment. I want you to take just a minute, actually 30 seconds, and I want you to get comfortable where you are. I'm going to get comfy in my chair, relax. Close your eyes and for 30 seconds, I want you to listen to the sounds where you are.
feel where you are. Listen. Okay, that is mindfulness. Taking the time to be in the moment, focusing. You know, it's amazing. Um, when I do this and there's no noise in the background, I think about song from my day, so I'm aging myself. It was called The Sounds of Silence. Because even in silence, you can hear the silence. So taking the time to be aware of where you are, who you are, who you are with. You know, we often play over in our minds what happened yesterday, or we worry about what happened, what will happen tomorrow. Well, the researchers at Cornell University, they conducted a study and they followed these participants over an extended period of time and discovered that 85% of what people worried about never happened. Being in the moment. Think of how much energy, and I know myself, you know, something go down and I'm already, I'm planned out, you know, the worst case scenario, and it'll wake me up at night. I'm thinking about that worst case scenario. And 85% of the time, that energy has been wasted. And even if it does happen, we still wasted energy wearing, sapping our energy from giving us the space, the peace, to really be able to think. Being in the moment helps you to enjoy your kids, your family, your friends, all the beautiful things that are around you. Enjoy what's in front of you. So how do we practice mindfulness? One, we pay attention. There's so much going on around us. We need to take time to experience the senses. We need to listen, touch, sight, smell, and taste. For example, when you're eating your favorite food, take the time to smell, taste, and enjoy it. Paying attention. Now, how many of you have ever gotten to your destination and once you got there, you don't remember quite how you got there. That's kind of scary because we were not being mindful. You know, how many times have your kids been talking to you or other folks be talking to you and you're somewhere else and you're just saying, uh-huh, and yeah, but we really were not there. So being mindful, listening to the people that are around you, and so that when you have decisions that you are making, you've already practiced about how you be mindful, how you focus, how you sort of put aside all 9,600 of those negative thoughts. So we also have to live in the moment. Find those simple pleasures. You know, when I think about simple pleasures for me, I think about a comfy chair, my warm electric blanket, my favorite snack. And I get in front of the TV. Well, I know it's the TV, but that's, that's still one of my guilty pleasures. Uh, and I look at the Waltons or Different World or That Girl. You know, it's nice just to sit and not to have to think. Because, you know, in TV land, you know, you can have a challenge. And in 30 to 60 minutes, it's all soft. Everybody is happy and everything is right in the world. And sometimes I just like to have those moments. Um, sometimes those moments is I have a cat, Coco. And I had to lock Coco out because Coco would like to be part of this experience. Um, 
And I love watching Coco sleep. There is nothing like the peacefulness of a pet, and particularly a cat. Now, I'm going to tell you, a cat is an animal that believes in self-care. <laughs> they will take care of themselves, and they'll figure out how you help. But there is such a peacefulness when they sleep that I say, you know, that is what I want. So living in the moment. Accepting yourself. You know, we need to treat ourselves like we are our very best friend. We are supposed to be the friend to ourselves that always have our back. We should never talk mean to ourselves. We should be kind to ourselves. And we need to sometimes look in the mirror. I don't care what my hair look like. I don't care I ain't got no makeup. But look in the mirror and see the beauty in ourselves and that we are unique and we are special. There is no one, none of us are like, there's no one like you. And that's pretty special. So accepting who we are, we, got, we all got a couple of flaws, but there is no such thing as in, in, in perfection. There are things we can learn. There are things we can do better. But we don't beat ourselves up about that. We have to be kind to ourselves. We also need to focus on our breathing. You know, when we started out, I did that little breathing exercise. When those 9,600 negative thoughts come through your mind, when something negative or when you need to think or when you need to just take a moment, breathe in and out. Be conscious of your stomach going up and down. And just breathe. Sitting and breathing just for a moment can help. I tell you, I have learned, I was thinking of a story, I had learned, I have learned something in terms of about mindfulness, not rushing, taking the time to think, I am on a 40-day plant-based diet. Anybody that knows me knows how much of a struggle this is going to be. And I'm going to have to tell you, what is so bad about it is from the day I started, I was already thinking about what I was going to eat the day after the 40 days. I would already picked out my restaurant. I told my daughter, as it gets closer, make sure you make the reservations so we don't... Um, miss out. I wasn't being mindful in the moment. Um, and so as I'm, I'm thinking about that and I'm thinking about plant-based and all the things that I love that I can't eat. Well, what they said in this program was you really need to be on it 90% of the time. So of course I'm thinking about what can I do for that 10%? And so I am just not focused, not mindful of the moment and thinking about, you know, just how I can quickly get through this, not thinking about the benefits because that was the purpose in, in doing it. You know what happened? I went to a cooking class and she was cooking plant-based chili and she had this plant-based salad. I really wasn't paying much attention in the beginning because this kale is killing me. And so she was doing a kale salad and she talked about all the seasoning and the herbs. And she said, one thing that, that, that came to my mind, she said, what you are missing are really the flavors and the taste. So as you do plant-based, what you're looking for is substituting some of the flavors that you are missing with some of the herbs and seasoning. And so I, I began to listen a little bit more. And when she got to that kale, she talked about all the ingredients being mixed together and how you massage the kale and, and all of that. So all of a sudden I became mindful. I became in that moment about, okay, I decided that a plant-based based diet is what I need to be healthy in this season of my life. And so I focused and I began to hear what I had not been able to hear before. 
and I tasted the kale. It did not taste anything like what I had. She had used olive oil and sesame seeds, and it made a difference. And I thought, you know what? I had not given this a chance. I had not been mindful. And so now granted, I'm going to tell you, I'm still probably going to go to that restaurant the day after the 40 days, but I'm taking a lot of this with me and I'm going to be mindful when I cook about the seasonings and the health benefits of, of what I'm doing. And I'm not going to be focused on the, what I perceive as a negative, all the things I can't eat, which is really the positive. So if I can put that positive mindset on this, maybe you all can do it for a couple other things. So that was really an important thing that I learned. As I wrap up, a couple of quick things. Don't neglect the basic components of self-care, which is eating a healthy diet. I'm getting there, y'all. Seven to eight hours of sleep, and getting regular exercise. There's no substitute for that. And I know like me, you know, I had a child with disabilities and Charles Everett was a 24 seven experience. But it's important that we be mindful that we can't be there for someone else until we're there for ourselves. Now, I'm going to give you an assignment. At the end of this webinar, when you click that leave button on the screen or when Andrea hits the end of the webinar button that, that cuts you all off, take a mindful minute and identify two or three things that you are grateful for. Because gratitude helps free up the space. Gratitude helps push those negative and unproductive thoughts away. You know, I started this presentation with the title of You Are Not Perfect, and that's perfectly fine. But I want to end with this quote. A perfect parent is a person with excellent child-rearing theories and no actual children. So you all, thank you for, for sharing these mindful moments with me. And I am going to turn this over to Andrea. Thank you so much, Beverly. I love all these tips and I know that I need to, to work on my <laughs> mindfulness. Um, I'm going to now launch a quick poll for everybody. Um, the, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, the grants that we work on require that we report back to them that what we're doing is useful, relevant, and of high quality. And we really appreciate your feedback. So I have launched that poll. If everyone could go ahead and complete that for us. And while we're doing that, if anyone has any comments or questions for Beverly, anyone want to share their tips of what they do yeah. for mindfulness, that is always appreciated. We can learn from each other. We can go ahead and if anyone has any comments or anything. Yeah, because I always learn from other folks. And, you know, what you hope when you do a presentation, you hope you're getting out a lot of good information that's going to be helpful. But if there's just one thing that I said that would be helpful, um, I consider that a good takeaway. Um, Y'all know I like stories. I remember when I um, had my first experience with ECAC. It was at a workshop. I had Charles, it was four. There was a flyer. Uh, I went to the workshop and for the first time I saw and was in a room with other parents who had children with special needs. And for that moment, I felt a little less long, alone. But, and Connie, I know, who was the executive director at the time and would, would eventually be my boss, she said lots of information at that session. But the one thing that she said to me was, um, if you don't know what to say at an IEP me meeting, say why. That one little tip 
because I didn't know what to say and I was scared and I was nervous. And so every time somebody told me something in an IEP meeting, I said, explain to me why. Well, you get lots of good information and eventually I became comfortable. So if there's just one little thing that you can take away, then um, I'm very thankful for that. Or saying thank you. Says it can be so easy to get discouraged. So glad to be around others who share my feelings. Her girls are both autistic, age 14 and 11. I tell you, parents, other parents throughout my whole journey has, has always been a lifesaver uh, for me. They can keep you up know what you're talking about. So thanks, Emily. I will add to you, before I started working at ECAC, I felt very alone for years. Um, and now I just, I can relate. It's amazing how much I can relate to the parents that I talk to. So that is definitely made me feel not alone, which is great. Uh, Elena says, I'm a school psychologist and it helps me to continually hear from parents and have more empathy and understanding. That's Thank an excellent that. point, Elena. Because that's what families need. Well, if there are no other comments, we can give you all a couple minutes back. But I did want to mention next week, in March for our first March Tool Time Tuesday, we are going to have parent educator Karen Laughlin um, speaking about moving on up, looking towards next school year, which sounds crazy, <laughs> but it is kind of, she's gonna be talking about questions parents can ask in spring IEP meetings to anticipate opportunities and challenges your kids may face next school year. So it's always great to start thinking ahead. So be sure to tune in on next Tuesday and join us as we talk about what you can do now for next school year. So I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. And thank you again for joining us and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. And as Beverly had mentioned, when we click that button, remember what you're grateful for. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody.